Peace and blessing Israel. This is Tropa Judah 144 coming back again with another video. All uh, through the power of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Wanna say peace, salutations to the elect and the one third out there listening and learning. Uh, to everyone around the world, all the uh Akims and Aquats, uh to all the twelve tribes. Wanna say shalom. Uh so today's lesson is going to be um I might title it, uh, Keep My Commandments, okay? And uh, I want to touch on this topic because it's very controversial. I've been seeing in the last several months on uh, what that actually means. So I want to dive into it today because I want to give you guys uh, some insight of what it's actually talking about in the commandments that we are meant to be following in these latter days, okay? Um so let's jump over to the scriptures real quick. Sorry about that. Get this here. Um, we're gonna start over in John 14, 15, and it says here, this is the scripture used the most. That is the most controversial because <laughs> um, a lot of people don't understand what is uh, what commandments is actually talking about here. They and it says here, if ye love me, keep my commandments. Now, the reason why I started off with this scripture is because when it says keep my commandments, when a lot of brothers and sisters come into the, come into the truth, the first thing that they learn about is who they are and them being Israelites. And then, of course, you are taken to uh, the book of Deuteronomy, particularly uh, chapter 28, to learn about the curses. And why we were put under the curse because we didn't follow the commandments. Now, here's where the problem is. When you go to Deuteronomy, it takes you back all the way to Exodus. I believe Exodus chapter 20, which it talks about. Um, actually, you know what? Let's just go there. Give me a second. OK, so here we are. Exodus 20, as I was right. And just, I'm just going to give you an example into this. Uh, this is. Uh, book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 3. Thou shalt not have no other gods before me. Verse 4. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graving images or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. So to you Christian gore, uh, church goers out there who's wearing the, the cross, the gold cross, silver cross, and all of that stuff like that, you need to take it off. Because as it says here, you shouldn't be wearing any graving images Thou shalt not bow them down themselves to them, nor serve them. So a lot of you that have the statue in your in your in your household wearing a cross or whatever, and you go like this, and all and all of that crap. <laughs> that's basically what it's saying here. For I, Yahweh, thy power, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Okay, and then this goes in. Uh, we jot down here. Here we go. We're going to get to the meat of it. Verse 12. Honor thy father and thy mother that the, that thy days be uh, that salakia. Yeah. Honor thy father and thy mother that th thy days may be long upon the land which Yahweh thy power giveth thee. Verse 13. Thou shalt not kill. Verse 14. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Verse 15. Thou shalt not steal. Verse 16, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. And then it goes on and on, right? So, now, this all is pretty much still valid to this day, right? And you may say, well, tribal Judah, okay, so what's the problem? What seems to be the problem? What commandments are you talking about? Well, when we start to get into Leviticus, right? And let me just bring up one in particular. All right, so let's say, let me just do this, Salaki, y'all. And because I want to show you guys something. Oops. Vegas. All right, here's a good one. Leviticus 12 and 3. Let's highlight that. 
And in the eighth day, the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised. Right now, this is going back under the uh, Moses law, because according to the Moses law, when you bear a son after the eighth day, that son has to be circumcised. Right. But when you go to the New Testament, when Paul and Barnabas came on the scene and let's go there, <laughs> I think it's Acts 15. Yep. Here we go. Watch this. Now, we just read in Leviticus, right? Watch this. This is Acts 15 and 1. And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised. This is the Pharisees. Listen. After the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. Now, verse 2. When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputations with them, meaning they had pretty much no beef with them. No, they weren't trying to argue. They determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question. So the Pharisees and the scribes, which are the Jews, were saying for the northern kingdom. OK, because remember, the northern kingdom was split from the southern kingdom. The northern kingdom went up towards Europe and they and they fell uh, captive to the Greeks, the Grecians, which you could read that up in the Apocrypha. And when they fell captive to the Grecians. They pretty much took on their ordinances. And you know what? I'm going to just prove it. Let me just back this up so I can show you. All right. So I said the northern kingdom, okay, follow after the Greek, after the ordinances of the Greeks. That's why they were uncircumcised. And I'm going to prove that to you, okay? We are in the Apocrypha. This is the book of 1 Maccabees, chapter 1, verse 11. And it says here, pay attention. In those days went there out of Israel wicked men. Who persuaded many, saying, Let us go and make a covenant with the heathen that are round about us, for since we departed from them, we have had much sorrow. So you have wicked ass men in Israel in the northern kingdom who told other Israelites within the tribes, persuading them to go and make a covenant with the heathen, which were the Grecians. Now, listen to this. Drop down to verse 13. Then certain of the people were so uh, forward herein that they went to the king who gave them license to do after the ordinances of the heathen. Whereupon they built a place of exercise at Jerusalem, according to the customs of the heathen. Here's the meat. Watch this. And made themselves uncircumcised and forsook the holy covenant and joined themselves to the heathen and were sold to do mischief. So that's why the Pharisees had a problem when Paul and Barnabas came to the northern kingdom uh, throughout Galatians and all of them. When um, Paul and Barnabas told them uh, that you don't need to be circumcised because circumcision uh, is nothing to Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. So if we go back to Acts, the New Testament, and reread this again, now you will understand why. I'm going to read it again. Acts 15 and 1. And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. When therefore Paul and Bartimaeus had no small decision as disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question. Right. Because we just read in the Apocrypha that the wicked men of Israel in the northern kingdom because they got tired of living sorrowful, they just gave up and said, well, you know what? So that we don't live like, you know, poor, we better take up the ordinances of the heathen. So they stopped circumcising their children. They fell out of the covenant. Now, watch this. Let me drop down. I want to get to the point. Here we go. I'm going to start at four. And when they were come to Jerusalem, this is Paul and Barnabas. They were received of the church and of the apostles and the elders, and they declare all things that the Most High had done with them. Verse 5. But there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees, which were the Jews, which believed, saying that it was needful to circumcise them and to, and to command them to keep the law of Moses. OK, commandments, right? Keep ye commandments, right? Watch this. And the apostles and elders came together for to consider this matter. So the apostles and the elders, when they heard of it, they came together to consider. Now watch this. Verse seven. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, man and brethren, ye know how that a good while ago, the 
the Most High made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth shall should hear the word of the gospel and believe. So what Paul is saying is we've been ordained by the Most High under Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai to speak the good news because they were trying to bring the northern kingdom back into the fold. Watch this. Verse eight. And the Most High, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us. Verse 9, and put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Okay? Now, let me get to the meat of it. Because I want to, I want to, I want you guys to see what was actually said. Right. OK, here we go. So let me start. Here we go. We're going to start at 24. For as much as we have heard that certain which went out from us have troubled you with words, subverting your soul, saying ye must be circumcised and keep the law to whom we gave no such commandment. But wait a minute, we just read in Leviticus. That after eight days of the son being born, they must be circumcised. We just read in John that if ye love me, keep my commandments. Let me read it again. Verse 24. For as much as we have heard that certain which went out from us have troubled you with words, subverting your soul, saying ye must be circumcised and keep the law to whom we gave no such commandment. This is coming from the apostles and elders. OK, this is coming from the apostles and elders. So now that you guys understand where I'm coming from, we have, as you can see, we have a problem with a lot of our brothers and sisters coming in here because they're being taught one thing when really it's, it's contrary. This is why Paul and Barnabas, um, when they came to teach the northern kingdom to bring them back under the fold, um, the Pharisees and the scribes, which were the Jews, particularly uh, southern kingdom, they was like, no, nah, man, you got to keep the law of Moses. Paul and, Barnes and, and the apostles and elders just said, no, we didn't give you no such commandment, because if that had been the case, we would have also stood by it is what he was saying. All right. Now, let's go back to John 15 and 10. All right. I'm going to take you all through this slow so you all can understand the commandments we must keep. If ye keep my commandments, this is your shot talking. Let me say that again. If ye keep my commandments ye shall abide in my love even as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love okay I want to say that one more time because this comes down to comprehension when you're reading the scriptures if ye keep my commandments not Moses uh, commandments or what Moses commanded us to do to keep the ordinances of the most high. No, Yahweh Shah said, if ye keep my commandments, OK, ye shall abide in my love, even as I had kept my father's commandments and abided in his love. That's why when Yahweh Shah came down in the flesh on his planet, OK, he kept the law. That's why he said, as I kept my father's commandments. All right. Now. I'm going to take y'all to John 14. Let's go back a chapter. Let's go down to verse 21. Get straight to the point. All right. This is John 14 to 21. He that hath my commandments, okay, and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Okay? So, you have to understand, brothers and sisters, Akims and Akwats out there, when you keep Yahweh's commandments or what he said, because Yahweh is the one that was nailed to the cross and through water and blood sacrificed himself onto you so that you could be saved and brought back to the fold as the adoptions of sons. OK, let me get a precept through that. This is Galatians four and five. Actually, we'll start at four. But when the fullness of the time was come, the Most High sent forth his son made of a woman made under the law. 
Remember when Yahweh said he kept his father's commandments under his law. Verse five. Here's the point to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons. So Yahweh when he gave up the ghost, he sacrificed blood and water on the cross so that we can be returned back into the fold as being the adoptions of sons. OK, now let's go back to John and then let's go to first John. Uh, three verse 23 mm -hmm. here it is right here this is first John chapter 3 verse 23 and this is his commandment that we should believe on the name of his son Yahweh HaMashiach and love one another as he gave us commandment OK, let me read that one more time. And this is his commandment that we should believe on the name of his son, Yahweh Shah Mashiach, because what is it to uh, believe in Yahweh Shah? Well, first, when you believe in Yahweh Shah, anything that comes out of his mouth or what you must do, you're following that commandment. OK, so when we go back to John 14 and 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. That's what Yahweh Shah was talking about. OK. So now let's go back to John. Let's go to verse, uh, sorry, chapter 12, verse 49. Get to the point. This is Yahweh Shah is in the red words. All right. This is John 12 and 49. For I have not spoken of myself, but the father which sent me, he gave me a commandment. What I should say and what I should speak. So. I chose this scripture because a lot of you guys who really don't believe in Yahweh Shah, you want to believe in only the most high Yahweh and keep Moses law. OK, Yahweh Shah is saying here that he gave him, meaning Yahweh gave Yahweh Shah a commandment on what to say. And what he should speak. So if the father is speaking to his son on what to say to us, that means we are to listen. OK, let me grab a precept so you guys can really understand what I'm saying. All right. This is Mark nine and seven. This is when Peter um, saw um, Eli Elias and um, uh, Moses in the sky. And I'll show you. Let's let's start with. Verse three, and then we'll get to the point. And his uh, raiment became shiny, exceeding white as snow, so as no fuller on earth can white them. Verse four. And there appeared unto them Elijah with Moses. And they were talking with Yahweh Shai. And Peter answered and said to Yahweh Shai, Master, it is good for us to be here and let us make three tabernacles, one for thee and one for Moses and one for Elijah. Verse six. For he wist not what to say, for they were so afraid. Here's the point. Verse 7. And there was a cloud that overshadowed them. And a voice came out of the cloud. This is the heavenly father, Yahweh, saying, this is my beloved son. Hear him. So if we go back. John 12 and 49. For I have not spoken of myself, but the father which sent me, he gave me a commandment what I should say and what I should speak. So again, we are not listening to the old ordinances of man doctrine, which is Moses law. We are to follow what Yahweh Shah has commanded because the father has given him the commandment on what to say and what he, uh, and how he should say it to us. So you guys are clear. Now you may say, what are Yahweh Shah's commandments? Let's go to Matthew five. And 17. Actually, no, we're going to. This is. I'm not going to go through all of this, but I'm just going to show you guys. I'm going to just read the first one. Whosoever, therefore, shall break one of these least commandments. This is Yahweh Shah talking because this is what is said to him through the Father. Whosoever, therefore, shall break one of these these least commandments and shall teach men so 
he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. This is where the controversy becomes. When he's talking about these least commandments, he's not talking about Moses' law. He's talking about the commandments he set forth from this day forward that you are meant to follow. Now, if you read all of Matthew chapter 5 from 19 all the way to, what is it, 48? And if you read all of Matthew 6, okay? And you read all of Matthew 7, those are Yahweh Shah's commandments. Those are what you are supposed to be doing in these later days in order to be saved. Now, we're going to end it with two more scriptures. Let's go to Galatians 5. Okay. And this. Um, I just want to show y'all. 23. So I just want to show y'all something, okay? This is what you guys need to be working on in order to be saved in the latter days, okay? This is pretty much um, Matthew 5, 19 to 48. Matthew 6 and Matthew 7 are Yahweh Shah's commandments of what to do. But this is to sum it all up of what you need to do in order to make it. Galatians 5, we're going to start at verse 16. This I say then, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Verse 17, for the flesh lusted against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to the one to the other so that ye can do the things that ye would. Verse 18, but if ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. Did you hear that? If ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. OK, and he's going to show you why. Verse 19, now. The works of the flesh are manifest. Now, pay attention. This is what you must abstract from immediately. Now, the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery. Okay, that was part of the commandment. Fornication. Uncleanness. Lasciviousness. Idolatry. Witchcraft. Hatred. Variance. Emulations. Wrath. Strife. Seditions. Heresies. Verse 21, envyings, murders, drunkenness, uh, ravelings, meaning like if you go to house parties and, you know, ravens and uh, rave and stuff like that, don't do it. And such like of which I tell you before, as I have told you in the time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of the most high. Now, here is what you must do. Verse 22. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, which is a big one, because when you're in this truth, you have to suffer gentleness. OK, meaning and that's probably the biggest one of it all. Gentleness. Don't let your anger overtake. OK. Goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, meaning having patience. OK. Against such, there is no law. So let me explain this. If you practice walking in the spirit, which they just outlined here, what it means to be in the spirit, having love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Right. If you practice doing those things, there's no law, meaning you're not judged. The most high will have mercy on you because you're walking in his. Uh, these are his commandments. OK. These are his commandments. All right. We're going to grab one last scripture. We're going to go to second Peter two and twenty one and we're going to end it with this. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. OK. So what is being said here is saying that. If you didn't come into this truth and you didn't know the way to righteousness, which is through the spirit, love, joy. OK, long suffering, goodness, faith. All right. Temperance, meekness. What I just read in Galatians. Right. If you didn't know that, then you have a better chance of being saved because you didn't know. Right. But if you known all of this, meaning if you came into this truth. 
right? And it says, because it says, after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. So if you came into this truth and you knew of this, but you still want to go out there and be, you know, hard headed and committing adultery, committed fornication, lasciviousness, lust, uncleanness, and all of that stuff, and not walking in the, in, in the right of the spirit, then, <laughs> you know, it's, it, what does verse 22 say? But it has happened unto them, according to the true proverb, the dog is turned to his own vomit again, and, and the soul that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. So what is that saying? Basically, that's saying that you, <laughs> you know, you might as well be as, as good as gone, because you came into this truth knowing um, right from wrong, but you still chose to go down the path of wickedness. Okay. So with that being said, brothers and sisters, Hakim's and Aquas out there, I hope you were sincerely edified by this video. And once again, the commandments that we are to be following is Yahweh Shai, because as the father said, hear him. This is my son. Hear him. Okay. Yahweh gave the commandment to Yahweh Shai on what to say. So if Yahweh Shai was saying everything that we must do, abstaining away from the lust of flesh and walking in the spirit, that came from the Father Yahweh. Okay? And how do we know what the commandments are? Well, as I said, start from Matthew chapter 5, verse 19 to 48. Read all of Matthew chapter 6 and all of Matthew chapter 7. Those are Yahweh Shah's commandments of what you must be following. And then if you go to Galatians, again, which I just read, Galatians chapter 5, starting at 16, um, that pretty much sums up everything that you need to stay away from and how you're meant to walk in the spirit. OK, so I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Rakakwadash. Uh, peace and salutations to the elect and the one third out there uh, scattered across the four corners of the earth and shalom to you Akims and Aquas out there man till next time tribal Judah out